Hey, this is Eric, and in this video I chat with Taryn Sullivan from Google at the ISTE 23 conference as we talk about lots of new updates for Google Workspace for Education. Well, hey, I am here with Taryn Sullivan, and we are at ISTE 23 in Philadelphia, and uh, just taking a break from our crazy busy schedules to chat about some Google updates. Uh, Taryn, we've talked before, uh, but in case folks don't remember that earlier conversation uh, when pra practice sets was first being introduced, go ahead and, and uh, tell a little bit about yourself. Sure. Yeah, I'm Taryn Sullivan. I'm a product manager on the Google for Education team, um, specifically on our adaptive learning uh, products and features inside of Google Classroom. So um, we launched Practice Sets last year, which um, is a, a way for teachers to create really engaging and interactive assignments. It gives real-time feedback, support in the moment through AI-generated support hints and resources, and then gives teachers a really nice insights dashboard uh, to, to show student progress, um, as well as dive in and actually see their work. Excellent. Yes. And um, I'll put a link in somewhere to that uh, earlier interview about, about a year ago when that first came out with loads of great details in there as well. But there's new stuff that's been coming out. And we're going to chat about a few of those things. Um, one that's got me interested is the updates to read along. So uh, I've been sharing about read along for, for years. Uh, I know initially it was a, an app called Bolo, I believe available in India. Correct. Yes. And then it became an app that was available uh, uh, worldwide as well, uh, became called Re uh, Read Along at that time. Um, and then about a year ago, it became web based. So you didn't have to use an app. You could just go on the web. And um, it was a, a tool where a student could read a book that was put on the screen. And while they were reading, the uh, AI would listen to the student reading and make sure they were pronouncing the words correctly. And if they got stuck and they weren't able to read a word, it would give them help and so forth. So I've been sharing this for a while. I think it's a great tool. It's in one of my uh, tools I mentioned in my hipster Google session about the lesser known Google tools. Nice. Well, I was so excited to see it pop up on some of your updates here. It sounds like uh, there's some big changes coming here as far as the expansion of how this can be used. Wanna tell us a little bit about what has happened. Yeah, so um, as as you mentioned, Read Along has been in market for quite some time and we've gotten amazing feedback, particularly from teachers who said we wanted to use it in the classroom. And so now Read Along will be um, embedded right inside Google Classroom and teachers will be able to select books, filter down by Lexile level and select you know the relevant level for each student, assign it in classroom. And the students can open it up right inside classroom do that reading, right. get that AI supported um, help as they go through the book, and then teachers get some insights and analytics on the other side. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. So the original read along still exists. Yep. If somebody just wants to go to uh, readalong.withgoogle.com, they can go there and they can still do it as like a one-off sort of a thing just to practice. But this sounds like a much more structured uh, approach. And so it's available in Google Classroom. Um, and you mentioned Lexile levels. Um, would you say there is an upper and lower bound? Like uh, what grade levels are we looking at here? Well, it's it's early literacy, right? Yeah. So K to five okay. is the key target for now. Um, but we're getting feedback from teachers at all levels and all different languages. Um, so we'd love to hear from teachers that, you know, around that try it out to where, what, what else they'd like to see it do. Well, absolutely. I imagine maybe people have mentioned about uh, ESL or ELL that um, this would be fantastic. But of course, the content would, would want to be adjusted. Has there right. been maybe some some discussions that would be a neat thing to explore to have this be an ESL tool, but with um, content that would be appropriate for adult learners or older learners? Right. Yeah. A lot of the content in there, the books are aimed at that K-5. So they're Absolutely. really sweet stories. My kids you love them, it. but they're it. kindergarten and first grade. So well, that's um, now the books then, um, I know when I've gone on the read along website, you've already got loads and loads and loads and loads of books there. I assume it's that same catalog that's being used here. Um, is that what you are working with then is the catalog that's provided? Can 
teachers add their own books? Are there more books coming? How would it work as far as that goes? Yeah, such a great question. So, you know, even from practice sets, one of our key goals was to enable teachers to use this content that they know and really love. Right. Um, I think that would be the type of feedback we'd love to hear from teachers. Is this the type of tool where you'd want to bring your own content in some yeah. way and enable it with this AI? So please send us feedback. Um, for now, we have what's in there, but I right. think we're really open and want to respond to what teachers want. Excellent. Now, as the students do read these, um, the AI will be uh, listening to what they're saying, tracking how they read, giving them feedback. Um, in the past, that's kind of where it stopped. If you were just using read along, sounds like this goes further now and that there's some some metrics being collected for the teacher to yeah. help intervene and track their students. So tell me about that. Yeah, just like a teacher would um, do in a basic assessment, right? They're looking at speed and fluency and words that they were struggling with. And so on. once the students completed the assignment, the teacher has a dashboard that shows them sort of how they're tracking with those different metrics, as well as even how they're doing over the last five assignments. Okay. So they can see if they're improving or they're struggling and maybe really need special attention. And then it shows the couple of words that, you know, they may be having trouble with to help reinforce or provide other assignments um, to reinforce that work as well. That's fantastic. So uh, down to a student level, does it do any class summarization as well? There are, there is a little bit, but right now I think it's mainly looking at the progress for each individual student um, because we know how critical that is. That's fantastic. Um, so it's part of Google Classroom. Uh, what Google tiers would this be associated with for somebody to be able to take advantage of this? So right now it's um, available through like the beta sign up form and it will most likely be a paid feature. Um, so That's perhaps like teaching and learning right. or plus. Yeah, exactly. Might be the it's, case. A, it's a great teaching and learning tool. So right now, as being part of uh, the beta, um, how would somebody sign up for this? I assume yeah. we have a, a link for yeah, them. Yeah, we can give you a link um, to post. Fantastic. I believe I already signed up oh, <laughs> as soon as it came out. I jumped right on and got our domain signed up because we do have students that would absolutely benefit from this. Well, that is fantastic. I'm really excited to see. Um, is it available now with the beta or coming soon with the beta? How soon should people have access to this? Um, sign up as soon as you can. Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure access will be rolling out very soon. Excellent. Very glad to hear that. Now, that's one of the big announcements that caught my attention, but I know there's a bunch of things that got announced uh, just a few days ago in preparation for ISTE. Um, did you want to highlight any of the other things, uh, such as uh, some of the new updates to practice sets or the uh, YouTube assessment tool in Classroom? Anything you'd like to mention? Sure, yeah. I mean, I think the the YouTube, the interactive questions mm -hmm. with YouTube videos is yeah. really neat because it allows you to take that video that you're assigning, maybe it's the slip, flipped classroom style, and it just allows those checkpoints to make sure that comprehension is happening and they're not sort of zoning out as they uh, watch Absolutely. the video. Absolutely. Um, maybe we should do that with this video every now and then, <laughs> yes, pop in a few questions stop. to make sure you're still listening. All yes, right. I love it. <laughs> um, yep, and new problem types will be rolling out with that as well in the future, but uh, it, we're really excited with the feedback we've gotten already. And, I understand yeah. open-ended questions was added recently because mm -hmm. it was just multiple choice yes. and now open-ended questions is available. Yep. Awesome. Yep. And what's great too, you get the dashboard, a very similar dashboard yeah. that you get with practice sets. So you yeah. can see the rolled up summary. Yeah. You can go, drill down into the, each question and view it that way. So it's really helpful. And my understanding is one of the big updates now is that there's going to be some AI generated questions for those videos, correct? So that rather than the teacher having to go through and add the questions in, there'll be some suggested questions they can choose from. Yeah. We're really excited about the way AI can just take the lift off the teacher and provide some suggestions, right? That they can then edit or change however Excellent. they please. So with that, we're seeing AI come in to provide some additional help. If we flip the script and take a look at practice sets, in the past, it has been that AI was what would add helpful resources to your questions. Sounds like now we're also going the other direction and teachers can add their own help resources into practice sets. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, one of the foundational principles of, of practice sets was really to keep the teacher in control and give them as much control as possible. Um, and believe it or not, it was actually quicker and easier to launch the AI generated supportive hints, not generated, but AI supported yeah. hints. Um, 
than to allow all that control initially. But we know how critical it is for teachers to add also their personalized touch. Like if they want to add a hint or a video that they've made and uploaded on YouTube, we want to enable that. And so um, we're really excited that that will be a lot easier to create the support that goes along with each question. Um, and just, I think it, it brings also uh, the possibility to do a lot more with that space in the future of like, oh, yes. you know, being able to suggest things that they can, can edit quickly and change. I love it. Well, thank you so much for taking a moment. I know things are really busy here at ISTE, but it's great to uh, meet you in person uh, after talking virtually in the past. Uh, but I'm so excited for all these new updates and uh, looking forward to getting my hands on these and trying them out. So yeah. thanks again so much. Oh, thank you. It's chatting. always a pleasure. <laughs> And for all the rest of my educational technology resources, be sure to visit my site at controlaltachieve.com, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel, sign up for my email newsletter, and check out my book, Control Alt Achieve, Rebooting Your Classroom with Creative Google Projects. Thanks so much, and take care.